Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner, recovering 6.22 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, 2nd edition. If you have any questions, you can do a video response or put something in the comments below. Be sure to like and share with your friends. And as always, um, if we go too fast, you can always rewind. So um, we, we just talked about these, these bound currents, the, the volume current on the inside that's the cross of the magnetic field, the, cur the curl of the magnetic field, and the surface current on the outside that's the cross product of the, magnetic, the magnetization capital M, with the, the uh, normal to the surface. And we're going to now try to understand what exactly is going on here. And so to understand the surface currents, we're going to take some you know, random shape here. And it's going to be a slab cut from the material that we're looking at. Okay? And so it's basically composed of, you know, for lack of a better way to think of it, cubes, infinitesimal cubes. Okay? And of course, they slice down like this as well. Okay, so what happens if you have magnetization is that each of these cubes has their own capital M vector, right? Okay, and what that means is that for each of these little cubes, let's take, let's blow up one of these cubes. So here we have a big cube. Okay, this guy has a magnetic moment pointing up. Uh, I'm sorry, magnetization pointing up. We're talking about volumes here, not infinitesimal um, things. And so there's like this current that has to wrap around. So there's a current going around to sustain that magnetization. Well, if you take two adjacent cubes, like let's say let's take uh, you know this dude and that dude. So if they have similar magnetizations, then if it's uniform magnetization on the inside, then the curl of that's going to be zero, and so you shouldn't get any internal currents. And indeed, you'll see that here. Let's let's draw the next guy over. So, okay, so he has the same magnetization as his neighbor. Okay, and so he gets the same amount of current that flows around. Okay, except for in this case, if you look. On this block, the back side is flowing backwards, and on this block, the back side is flowing frontwards. And so when you stick these two guys together, the currents will cancel, right? Now where they don't cancel is on the edges, okay? So basically what you get is you get the current from all the uncanceled edges of that material, okay? And we've already vigorously um, calculated this, you know, using uh, our advanced ability to use uh, multivariable calculus in three dimensions. But uh, we're going to do a quick a quick uh, examination here. So um, the dipole moment of this dude, I need a different color. Where's my black? Okay, there we go. So the magnitude of this dude is going to be M, capital M, times the volume. How much is the volume? Well, let's call this T and let's call the top of this thing, the surface area, A. Okay, so it's M, A, T. Okay, that's the volume. So we have a, this thing behaves like a magnetic dipole of magnetic uh, magnitude M, A, T. Okay, so. Um, and that the current flowing around in order to produce such a magnetic dipole has to be the current times the length here, A. Okay. Um, um, the area, so you just take the current flowing around and there. So the how much current, how much surface current? Well, surface current is current divided by uh, linear length. So the surface current is the total current there divided by t, right? Well, um, up here we can cancel out the a's, and so we get i equals m t or i over T is equal to M. And so here we get that the surface current is equal to the magnetization. Okay, uh, but on this surface we don't get any. But on this surface we do. Well, what we have to do is we have to calculate um, the cross product. So here we have normal vectors. Let's do green for normal vectors. All right. Normal vector, normal vector, normal vector, normal vector, normal vector. Okay, so if you take just one side, let's take this front side that's facing us, 
So you have the magnetic moment, you have the normal vector, and the current is m cross the normal. Okay, so this is equal to m cross the normal hat, whichever way you're looking at. Okay. Um, on the other side, so we take m cross the normal, and we get a current going into the page. On the back side, we take m cross the back side, going this way, and so you see it's the cross product. It has to be the cross product there. Okay, so that's a really quick uh, back of the envelope sketch of what's actually happening. Um, so uh, this is kind of weird because basically the whole trick lies in reducing this volume with uniform magnetization uh, as if it's a single magnetic dipole moment. Okay. Um, when we have non-uniform magnetization. Okay. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we're going to have. Um, a cube here, okay, and then next to this we're gonna have another cube. Oh, see, I can't draw sometimes. Okay, and let's say this one has a small magnetization, and this one has a big magnetization. Okay, and so what's gonna happen is for this guy we're gonna have a small I, right? But for this guy it's going to be big. And I should draw it with two arrows to kind of show that it's really big. So in between here the currents don't exactly cancel, right? So you have two guys coming this way and you have one guy going that way and so the net result is in between here is you get a net current like that, okay? And so if you want to calculate the net current between two of these little blocks you have to look at how the magnetization changes, okay? So the current coming in this direction, there's that black, so the current in this case, and I'm going to use in the x direction, x is this way, x, y, z. So the current in the x direction is going to be, um, well, you can have it due to this, this kind of effect. So we have the, um, the change in the vertical. The, the, the partial derivative with respect to z, um, no, the, I'm sorry, the z component of the magnetization um, minus the z component of the magnetization at y, so this guy minus that guy, the, the vertical height, okay? And the direction, A second. They're, they're basically deriving the curl for you here. Um, where does he throw the dz in from? The dz, oh, that's the height. So this is dz. Okay. So it's that times dz. And so that's just, you know, the partial derivative with respect to y of the z component of the magnetic field dy dz. Okay. So, um, if you think about, so you have a cube here, and then you have a cube back here, and you have another cube over here, and you have a cube below it, right? If you think about these cubies, and um, you think about, okay, well, there would be a current flowing this way if this magnetization was strong and this magnetization was weak. And so you, you get not just a case where, you know, so if you had this one strong and this one weak, then you'd have a, current, a strong current flowing this way and a weak current flowing this way. And so the net result is you get a strong current flowing that way. And so you have to think about not just this direction, but the other direction. Basically, you end up with the, um, the, the curl. You, know, you, you walk through this and, and you basically get a, a neat geometrical interpretation of what the curl means. So you see that your bound internal current is just the curl of the magnetization. Okay? Now, the, the interesting thing is, is what should, can, is it possible for this current to accumulate a charge at any point within this, this, the, uh, the cube? So the question is, you know, what's the divergence of this curl, of this, of this field? And the answer is, well, the divergence of any curl of, of anything is always going to be zero. So we know for a fact that um, you're not going to accumulate charge. It's not going to build up an electric field over time just because something's magnetized, right? And um, that's basically what's going on there. So I would do the mental gymnastics it takes to really understand what's going on here. Um, I would look at all six possible combinations of changes in magnetization versus changes in position 
and you'll see that um, you know indeed the curl the curl actually does have a really sensible in this in this framework it really does make a lot of sense what it means so hope that helps take care and bye